Yeah, so fortunately there have been guidelines uh, put out by um, the Global Initiative for Asthma, or GINA, um, as most people know it. Um, and those have been updated annually, um, not only for asthma in general, but there's also been this sort of pocket guide for the evaluation and management of difficult to treat and severe asthma that's been put out by GINA. And that really is a nice guide that I think provides a nice algorithm for individuals that are managing severe asthma or difficult to treat asthma. And, and it walks you through, you know, how you go through the evaluation of an individual um, evaluating specifically for those type 2 biomarkers, including eosinophils and potentially exhaled nitric oxide um, and potentially others to determine if someone does have um, type 2 inflammation and fits the sort of criteria for difficult to treat or severe asthma. Obviously, you have to adjust for and look for things like non-adherence. Um, and, and other factors uh, prior to sort of saying that someone truly has severe asthma. But after you've done that and you identify someone as having type 2 inflammation, they do recommend um, dupilumab or anti IL 4 therapy as one of the options that can be considered and used in individuals that have difficult to treat uh, asthma, severe asthma, um, and, and in particular oral steroid dependent asthma. So, I mean, we are unfortunately learning more and more about the potential negative impact of oral steroids, not only used chronically, but even in intermittent bursts um, and the role that those steroids may have on long-term outcomes, including things like um, osteoporosis, glucose metabolism, weight gain, um, um, eye issues. So there's a number of things that can occur from chronic oral steroid use. Um, and a number of negative sort of factor, negative health outcomes that can result from oral steroid use. And certainly in those that are oral steroid dependent, um, those risk factors are amplified and we oftentimes see them. So, you know, and historically we really haven't had great options that uh, we've got available for us. If you look back at the initial omalizumab studies, the Zoller studies, they weren't actually able to demonstrate efficacy in patients that had oral steroid dependent asthma. Um, so it's nice now that we have a couple of, uh, of options for patients that have oral steroid dependent asthma. And in particular, you know, one that is in the label for dupilumab um, is that, you know, it is an oral, oral steroid dependent asthma. Um, it's a medication indicated for those that have oral steroid dependent asthma and has been shown regardless of biomarkers to reduce the need for oral steroids in those individuals that have oral steroid dependent asthma. Um, so you know, it's, it's a necessary tool, um, one that we've, uh, you know, really eagerly uh, been anticipating uh, to use. And we've fortunately had a lot of good success early on in those that have oral steroid dependent asthma. And, and I think it's also important to note that a lot of our oral steroid dependent asthmatics, um, probably about 20% or more, also have comorbid um, chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyps. And it's oftentimes difficult to ascertain in those individuals that have comorbid disease, um, how much of their oral steroid dependency is coming from their upper airway versus their lower airway um, because they're oftentimes on oral steroids and they'll describe feeling short of breath and having difficulty with control of their asthma when they're off of oral steroids and you can't tell if that's really coming from their upper or lower um, airways. And when we've oftentimes maybe had success in controlling the asthma component with other biologics, um, we, we often see that their nasal polyposis and chronic rhinosinusitis actually worsens upon withdrawal of oral steroids. And dupilumab has been nice because we've actually been able to get people on much lower doses and sometimes off of their oral steroids with control of both their upper and lower airway disease. Um, so it really is a nice entry into the market um, for those individuals.